most people I said are either appalled or feel sorry for you or want to help you when you have cancer. My friend Barbara, I swear, was jealous. She thought, oh, this is a wonderful spiritual opportunity for you. No, I did not feel lucky at all. I don't view my cancer as a blessing. I don't view my cancer as a gift. I view my cancer as a mystery. One thing that comes up right away when you get cancer is that you're obligated to be a good citizen. And to be a good citizen in this culture means to be a soldier, to be a warrior. War against poverty, war against drugs, war against cancer. You need to put on your riot gear, and run a 10K and fight a battle, and therefore you're gonna be willing to be poisoned, slashed, and burned. It's growing, it's malignant. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut your breast off, we're gonna give you a months long round of radiation, high dose chemo, some poison run into your veins that would make your hair fall out. We're gonna give you five years of tamoxifen. It's got, it's got terrible side effects, but it's okay. You'll get to live another month. I like my body. I'm, I'm very sort of protective about my body. I treasure my body. They're telling you, you're going to die. You'll die if you don't have this treatment. And my body and my psyche and my soul and my spirit were telling me something very, very different. to the really essential questions about how you want to live, how you want to die, what you want to leave behind when you die. After we die, we're going to see how the world really works, and we're just going to see all the war, all the huge battleships were just nothing. They were just so horribly irrelevant and nothing. What kept the world going was someone saying, oh my God, there's a bud opening on the, on the verbena 